Hi everybody, so in video 1879 we made this. It's basically two coils in one and a serpentine coil arrangement. And I made a pretty cap for it, and we can put that on. There we go, we get ourselves a nice little motor stroke generator. Now, in the video, two really interesting things came up. One was, I'm not quite sure how it works, and the other was, can we get some energy out of it? Well, yes, we can get energy out of it, and in a bit in the video, that's exactly what we're going to do. But first, how exactly does it work? Well, you've got to think of a transistor as a switch. Now, this is called a blocking oscillator. Another way of thinking of it is a pulse oscillator. Now, there are lots of ways of arranging that, but perhaps the simplest way is like this. Now, if you have a look at that diagram, you'll see those two squiggly lines. They're two coils. The first coil is connected at VCC, which is just the positive connection. Then it goes through the collector and the emitter of the transistor to ground, which is the negative connection. Now, if I connect anything between positive and negative, like a light, it's going to light up unless I put a switch in there and break that circuit. The collector and emitter are just like a switch. There's no straight through connection there. There's only a straight through connection when you press the switch. When we send a current to the base, it's as if we press the switch and then there will be a straight through connection. And of course, that will energize the coil. That will turn it into a magnet and that will push against the magnets in the rotor, pushing the rotor around and making it work as a motor. But it will only align. It won't go all the way. It will go one slight alignment. Then it'll stop. And what we need to do is we need to turn that back off again so that it can whiz past on again to give it another push. Now we can do that by touching two wires, which is exactly what we did in the first video in this series. But it's much more convenient, of course, if we have an automatic switch. Now, if you look at that diagram again and look at the second coil, that second coil is just like in a transformer. When we put power down the first coil, it creates a magnetic field which interferes with the second coil, and that field collapses. So does the field around the second coil, and that induces a small current. And of course, because that second coil is now connected to the earth and the base, that small current can flow. The tiny flow of current along the base acts like a switch. It makes the switch the base close, and so we have a connection between the collector and the emitter, and of course that turns the drive coil back on and it continues to turn. So that's pretty much what pulse oscillators are for. They create a timed circuit. Now that two-coil arrangement with the transistor is the very heart of these oscillating circuits. That's all there is to it. It's just an automatic switch driven by the second coil. The second coil gets driven because, well, it's got magnets passing past it, so it's going to. Now then, how do we get some power out of this? So I've got this set up exactly like it was in the diagram, where we've got the big coil connected to the collector at one end and then straight through to the positive at the other. And then, of course, the emitter goes to the negative of the power supply. So it would, it would be taking power if that switch was turned on. And you can see it's set at 5 volts and it's drawing absolutely nothing because this switch is off. What I need to do is turn that switch on and that switch is that second coil, the small coil. If I send a pulse down that small coil, it will switch on that transistor at the base and that will allow current to flow between the collector and the emitter and of course it passes through the big coil and so of course the big coil causes the motor to turn. So, the minute I give that a pulse, it's going to work. Now with this thing, you give it a pulse by giving a little spin. So if we give it a little spin, there we go. It's now started to draw power. I think it's about 5 volts and about 20 milliamps, Luke. Spot on. Awesome. So we've actually got this now working. And the good thing about these transistor circuits is they're actually very efficient because they, in their duty cycle, they spend a fair amount of time off and they switch at zero volts, so there's less current wasted. So they're very efficient in those terms. And like I said, this is the heart of the system, the two coils and the transistor. You can do other things with it to regulate it, stabilize it, change it from monostable to A-stable by using other components. But these are the very basic components. Now, to get some energy back out of this, of course, there are lots of ways of doing it. The Dual Thief famously just connects an LED. We could have a third coil in there if we wanted. We could use that as a step-up coil like you would with uh, well, a, a flash charger in a camera, for example, or the Slayer Exciter or something like that. 
What we're going to do is use a simple mechanical arrangement. I quite like simple mechanical arrangements because they just show you what's going on. You might have noticed on top of the rotor here, we've got some magnets. Hang on, I'll stop that and show you. So there's the rotor, it's 36 neodymium magnets, one centimeter, two millimeter. If you want the build, then see the previous video. But on the top of here, I've put some other neodymium magnets, six of them in a north-south, north-south arrangement. We drop that on and start it. What we can do is we can collect some current using this coil. This is just a coil from a microwave oven transformer and I've connected that up here so we can see what that current, uh, that voltage is actually going to be. So let's do that. Okay, let's start the motor. 20 milliamps? Yep, oh, okay. And here's our coil and we'll hold that coil next to our spinning magnets and we should get a voltage reading and Luke will tell me what that reading is. Whoa, 11 volts. 11 volts. 12, 12 volts. 13? So <laughs> wow. We're getting out of it, mate. About 10.7 at the moment. Now? 13. Awesome! <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's kind of fun, but you've got to ask yourself, all right, but can it do anything? Well, I've linked up this set of four lights to the coil, and we're going to hold the coil over the... Um, rotating magnets, see if we can light those lights, but in order to see it a little bit better, we'll put the lights out. Luke, do us a favour, mate. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers, mate. <laughs> okay, so there you go. Now, it is a bit like a mechanical transformer, okay? Uh, and it's able to draw the power out and use the power to do something else. And like I said, the thing about it is um, the switching is very efficient. And remember, you can get it better by adding extra components. I'm just showing you the heart of the system. Okay, to my mind, that was pretty cool, hey? These pulse oscillators, or blocking oscillators, are used all over the place. You see them in switch mode power supplies. Of course, they're the basis of the dual thief. You see them in Slayer exciters. Anywhere where you want a timed pulse to do something, turn something on or off, you'll find a readily available option in these kind of oscillators. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.